Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxes, and tonight it's the first round of the MIAA South Sectional Playoff, and the Braintree Womps come to town to face off against your 15th seeded Brockton Boxes. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. Eamon, what are you thinking for the first round? Well, this is going to be a great game. The Womps come in uh, with about the same record as the Boxers, so we're expecting an even contest. Uh, both teams are senior, senior laden, and especially the Womps with 11 uh, graduating seniors on this year's team, whereas uh, Brockton only has five. Uh, so expect a tough test for the Boxers, and uh, take it away, Mad Dog. Now, Eamon, injury is playing a huge part of this Brockton Boxers season. We see Yasmini Texera back on the field starting. She's missed the last couple of games. Perhaps more importantly for the boxers than that, Jen Caruso, who is wearing a cast for the majority of the season on her right wrist, has shed the cast for the playoffs. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, she took the precautions. I believe that's what it was in the first place. It wasn't per se an injury, but they were concerned about uh, perhaps her developing an injury in that right wrist. Now she's lost the cast, which is great news. Uh, but I think actually more importantly, like you mentioned, is the Yasmina Teixeira. Uh, senior defender for this boxers team. She's obviously a leader. Uh, you know, she's been there on the bench. Uh, a tough collision really took her out a couple weeks ago, uh, but it's great to see her back on the field. So the 18th seeded Braintree Wamps will throw it in. We have a quick conference with the official at the Brockton bench. A, an issue with the ball girl or something. I'm, I'm not really sure what that was, but... And we're back on. <laughs> Liz Buckley clears it back across midfield for the boxers. Now the important Yasmina Texera with it. Up to Narita Montron. Montron looking to spring Mackenzie O'Reilly, but it's intercepted by Braintree. A lot of headbands out here tonight, Mad Dog. It's uh, it's definitely chilly as it snowed yesterday. Uh, not, not any precipitation on the field, but it is definitely a frigid night out here in Brockton, Mass. And... A lot of these girls are bundled up, and so are we, too. November 3rd, it's like you said, it snowed yesterday. Really unbelievable. And, I was and waiting of course, for it. Of course, Eamon, it's going to be 70 on Wednesday when the winner of this game will face off against Franklin at Franklin. And what a just what a change of atmosphere, you know. it's. I mean, you remember playing sports when you were younger. When it was cold out, you know, you didn't want to run as hard. You didn't want to make contact. When it's warm, you know, you run around, no issues, and... You know, I'm sure I'm sure the girls will be really happy for that uh, weather forecast coming here on Wednesday. Maria Del Pico down into the corner looking for the cross. It's up to Narita Montron. Montron, excellent ball skills right on the line. And it's going to be a corner kick for Brockton, the first opportunity of the game for either team. Watching Brockton pregame, uh, they were obviously really excited about this game. A lot of energy, you know, dancing around, having a good time. Braintree seemed a little bit more serious, uh, but I think both teams are, are well adjusted to this game so far. And uh, though there's not much action, you like to see the communication that's going on down there, uh, at least for the Lady Boxers, doing a really good job of helping their teammates out. Brockton was able to get ahead on that ball, but it went straight into the arms of the goaltender for the Braintree Womps. Jesse Teneglia. Of course, the one bad part about Texera coming back, there is a downside. We probably will not be seeing the flip from Amanda Almeida tonight. Well, maybe she'll get her chance off the bench, and we hope so, because that, that acrobatic throw-in is one of the more spectacular things you will witness in uh, a high school soccer contest, but really a contest in any sport. Really just a tremendous athletic feat, and she does it with ease and grace. Oof, nice move there. Takes air, takes over. Allison O'Rourke. Gets it up to Montron. Montron with it, taken back by Braintree. A lot of back and forth action across midfield here thus far. Montron trying to feel out the defense there and really just uh, let the ball kind of get away from her on the near side here, but uh, that will be a throw in on the far for Lara Andretti. Brockton pressuring the ball very well. Jen Caruso has it. 
She gets it up to O'Reilly. It's going to go out of bounds off of Braintree. It'll be a Brockton throw in deep in Womp's territory. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Mackenzie O'Reilly's second start in as many weeks. Yes. I believe she's that been inserted correct. into the lineup. That's something to watch uh, if you're the boxers at the all-important forward position. Obviously, you have Caruso up there. Uh, but sometimes these the boxers have struggled to find chemistry and really uh, a distributor or even a, definitely a scorer alongside Caruso. We'll see if Mackenzie O'Reilly can provide the spark that the lady boxers need this evening. Brockton going with three forwards up front. Along with O'Reilly and Caruso is Narita Montrand. O'Reilly with it now. She doesn't get rid of it fast enough, and Ariana Sylvia has to chase it down on the far sideline. Sylvia over to Caruso. Caruso back to Sylvia. Sylvia looking across for Texera. And it's going to go out of bounds off of Braintree. Really just a miscommunication there between Ari Sylvia and uh, Yasmina Teixeira. Looking for the ball a little bit more down the field uh, was Teixeira, and it, it ended up uh, you know, it ended up rolling out of bounds. There's a shot from Narita Montron, who was trying to connect with Caruso, but it was picked up by the senior goalkeeper for the Braintree Wombs, Christy Fleming. And Braintree doing a good job here of keeping uh, four defenders back, uh, really just protecting against a uh, dynamic offensive attack for Brockton. Uh, we'll see if that strategy changes, perhaps if they get down, or maybe even if the offense isn't as successful if they would have hoped. Maybe they adjust and bring another player forward, but... Uh, thus far playing pretty safe defensively are the Womps. Brockton double teaming any ball carrier that uh, Braintree can send forward. Texera's pushed down, no whistle. Braintree comes away with it, and it's going to go all the way to the foot of Tori Viola. Yeah, and that was good defense there by the Womps, really uh, showing an aggressive uh, body was Angelina Joyce coming back from her forward position, really just back checking Yasmina to share on that play. We have Brockton throwing on the far sideline, just inside midfield. Seven minutes into round one of the MIAA South sectional playoffs. And a good crowd on hand here tonight. Uh, actually, a, a lot more Braintree fans than I expected. Uh, but a good crowd. Everyone's excited. MIAA, South Sectionals. You know, and a chance to move on Wednesday night and perhaps face one of the better teams in the state. Whoever should advance, as both of these teams are sort of in the uh, bottom quarter or fifth of the bracket, if you will. A tough test standing the winner of this game because they will take on the second seeded Franklin team who did not lose. They went 14-0-3 during the regular season for a winning percentage of .91. A daunting task, uh, definitely. Franklin presents all sorts of nightmarish players and, and schemes and, you know, really the this team would be lucky to go on and, and to beat a team like Franklin. But, hey, you never know. You get in the playoffs and you get a little momentum going. And we've, we've seen magical things happen before. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't count either of these teams out come Wednesday. The Womps also doing a good job of matching the physical intensity that the Lady Boxers usually bring to the field. Uh, noticed, you know, some some hand checking, a little bit of jersey pulling and stuff. Obviously, you know, these girls know it's the playoffs in there. They're going to do everything they can to try Crossed and get their Crossed by Caruso. Narita on the box. It's saved by Fleming. What an opportunity for the Brockton boxes. And Narita Montron had it in the box, spun and put a quick shot on the Braintree net. It'll be a Brockton corner kick, but what a save by Fleming. Montron was robbed against Cardinal Spellman last week in, in sort of a very similar position in the box. But, you know, that's that's just a senior goalkeeper right there. She's seen shots for four years, and she'll probably make another one like that. Caruso into the box, headed by Narita Montron and saved by Fleming. The best offensive uh, sequence of events for the Brockton Boxers right there, but Christy Fleming, senior goalkeeper for the Braintree Womps, staying strong. Narita Montron making her presence felt early and a great cross by Caruso there. Uh, and it, really just a, a subpar header for Montron. 
Here's an opportunity for the Wamps. Ooh. It's gonna be picked up by Viola after some very well executed short passing by the Wamps. Yeah, Janina Ribeiro looking for a, uh, a nice little crossing pattern there. Couldn't find her teammate, unfortunately, but you can see that the Wamps are, are talented offensively and, and obviously have a good, uh, you know, a good sense of where their teammates are gonna be as that pass was just a hair offline. It's going to be a Braintree throw in. Very deep in Brockton territory. Oh. And now it's going to go the other way. Adriana McDevitt almost able to keep it in down there. She uh, she completed the throw in, but the pass back to her on the sidelines was came in a little bit too hot, and she was unable to keep it in along the uh, red line here on the football stage field. Ten minutes in to... The first round of the MIAA South sectional playoffs, scoreless between the Braintree Wamps and your Brockton Boxers. We're going to have a whistle against Braintree. It'll be a free kick for Brockton. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside Eamon Convey bringing you all the action from a very cold Marciano Stadium this chilly Monday night. Really, it's been an incredible couple of days as far as weather goes. Changed very dramatically. Now Caruso putting on the pressure. And it's going to be a throw in very, very deep in Braintree territory. Caruso to Montrond. Montrond holding her cross. Intercepted, but Del Pico has it. Now Sylvia. Sylvia looking to spin. Almeida with the one timer. It's going to be blocked by number three for the Wamps. And out goes down into the corner. And that's going to be a corner kick for the Brockton Boxers to be taken by none other than Narita Montrond. And uh, really just an ambitious attempt there for Ariana Almeida, right about the 30-yard line uh, on the football markings. And that, you, you, chances are you're just not going to score from that range. I, I understand what she was trying to do. You know, you want to get the keeper peppered early, try and give yourself a chance, but it was a little Kick ambitious. Is up just through the hands of Fleming. There's a Brockton boxer down in the net, slow to get up. That's Caruso. She's all right. Look so, for a something second. Something tells me that... It, Unless she physically is unable to walk, Caruso is playing the entire game here tonight. Absolutely, and you know, you always when you see a player go down like that after a big jump, you always fear the worst. But good to see her pop up off the turf, Mad Dog. She looks like she's all right. Montron with the excellent move still has it. She gets it back to Sylvia. Sylvia's gonna one time it into the legs of number 11. Now Almeida with a one-timer is going to be picked up by Fleming. And that was Lily Horrigan. She's adjusting her socks because that, that one was a blast right off the back of the legs. That's, that's a tough, tough thing to do, especially in this weather, Mad Dog. That hurts. Sylvia putting pressure on the ball, ultimately taken by the Brinch Wamps and sent back to midfield. Lots of back and forth action. Brockton getting the majority of the offensive chances, but Braintree has snuck in a couple of short passing attempts. Absolutely, two shots on goal uh, by my count. Uh, one of them, you know, a little bit more dangerous than the other, but I, I, I feel Braintree will continue to try and get a better chance, especially on, on Tori Viola. She's only a freshman, but Mad Dog, we've covered a lot of these games and she's just been tremendous for such a young kid. Absolutely. Great skill in goaltenders. Braintree comes away with an opportunity. It's going to go into the corner, and it's going to be a Braintree throw in as they make a couple of substitutions. Number four and number seven entering the game. That is Carolyn Cross and Melissa Madigan. Yep, and coming off the field is Lily Horrigan, who got hit in the legs there and actually almost jumped in on that offensive opportunity as well. Clearly a very good two-way player uh, for the Wamps and they'll probably try and get her back out on the field as soon as humanly possible. Almeida clears it out to Caruso. Caruso weighing her options. Gets past a defender. Good change of direction. And Caruso's versatility is really her, her greatest asset, Eamon. She's just a very smart player. She knows how to use her, her size, her physicality, her speed, her quickness. She uses every tool in her arsenal. 
Uh, and it's really just always an impressive display uh, when the senior gets out here and does her thing. And now she's going to have a corner kick. It's going to be taken by Montron. As Caruso mm -hmm. made some pretty good moves to send it out of bounds across the end line. And it looked like she made a gesture a to A short Montrand. kick by Montron. Montron with a shot. It's blocked. Oh, what a what a heel turn by Narita Montron. Now crossing it. The shot. That's in the back of the net. Brockton draws first blood. Ariana Silvia on the header. Narita Montron with a beautiful pass. And Ari Silvia. Really what Narita tried to do on the on the header just before that. Ari Silvia is able to capture that beautiful movement, keeps the speed on the ball, and it rolls in the near side just past the senior keeper, Christy Fleming. And just like that. The Lady Boxers take a lead, Mad Dog. What a strategy by Narita Montron to see that there was too much coverage in the box. Send a short kick over to Almeida, I, I, I believe, who sent it into the box, and it was headed by Ariana Silvia just out of the reach, as you said, of Christy Fleming. An excellent, excellent scoring play by the Brockton Boxers. They take a one to nothing lead 15 minutes into this game, and now Caruso threatening again. And that, that usually gives gives this team life. I mean, it would give give any team life. Score a quick goal, you know, get a little confidence. Every player on the team, even if they're not the ones to put it in the net, they build off that sort of play, and that shows as Brockton's right back at it on offense. And it's going to be the fifth corner kick of the game to be taken by Narita Montron. Jen Caruso had four players defending her and still able to come up with a corner kick. Let's see if we see a similar strategy. Narita Montron sends it into the box. It's just missed be Mackenzie O'Reilly. Taken out by number four for the Womps. Good job by Maria Del Pico to step up from her midfield position there, really just to force uh, Allison O'Rourke to get the ball towards the sidelines. Now Brockton kicks it back out of bounds. There's the effect of having Yasmina Teixeira back on the field. Just a really aggressive play from the from her defensive position, throwing her body around out there. She's leading by example for Brockton. Rita Montron to Ari Silvia. Silvia, the senior captain, back up to Texera. Texera looking for Narita Montron, doesn't connect, and it's cleared across midfield by the Womps. Hard to tell if Teixeira was trying to make a move there and just kicked it a little too hard or actually was trying to make that pass. Either way, it was it was errant and, and nothing came of it. Yeah, Brockton throwing right in front of first year head coach, interim head coach, Admir De Silva, who's gonna be thrilled with the effort he just saw on the corner kick goal. Absolutely. I think it's something that Brockton has really struggled to execute all season. I, I can't remember many times in which they've scored on set pieces from the corner. Uh, and, as, and in the playoffs, I mean, what a better time to start doing the right things. Montron with an excellent move, another excellent move. She's pushed down, no whistle, but she gets it over to Mackenzie O'Reilly. O'Reilly looking to spring Caruso, who pulls up a little bit lame, and it goes into the hands of Christy Fleming. Sort of a questionable uh, no call there, really just, you know, a, a blatant push, but... In any case, the, you know, perhaps an advantage should have been played. I don't know if the ref didn't see that one or the, that, that was pretty clear. But you would hope in, a, you know, in the south sectional playoff game that you would get, you know, decent referees out here. We've had we've certainly seen some issues uh, this season for the, both the boys and girls. Absolutely. Now, Tori Viola way out of her net going to pick this ball up before two Womps pounce on the opportunity. Absolutely. Streaking up. Caroline Cross, who's uh, who's been mixing it up, and also Allison O'Rourke, whose name we've mentioned a couple of times. Both were streaking towards the freshman keeper, uh, but smartly she was out there to play it. Now Viola again is going to pick it up before number 28. Maybe it was Aaron Leonard, number 20. Tough to tell up here. Boxers doing a good job defensively, too. I know they've given up a couple of chances, and they've almost had a, another few that they've given up. But overall, doing a good job packing it in. Buckley, uh, Amanda Almeida, Tiana Brooks, Yasmina Tashera and company doing a really good job of not allowing Braintree to uh, really get a, a threatening scoring opportunity on their freshman keeper.
Brockton really doing a good job. That's going to be a, a illegal shield called on Ariana Almeida. Ariana Almeida thought she was playing basketball there for a second. Just, that was a really nice box out. Unfortunately, you can't do that on a soccer field unless you're both setting, sort of going the for the pick ball. for uh, Yasmini Texera. Either way, it'll be a womp free kick from the 40-yard line of the football markings. A missed kick in here. Braintree comes with an opportunity. It's broken up momentarily by Del Pico, and it eventually goes out of bounds off of Narita Montron, so Braintree will have a throw-in. And uh, give Braintree credit here. I mean, down one nothing, but they're they're back in the offensive zone. They're pressuring this Brockton defense. Uh, they've been, you know, in this position now for a good 30 to 45 seconds, and that's what you need if you're trying to come back, sustain possession in the offensive zone. Excellent play by Liz Buckley, preventing the corner kick, preventing the shot attempt, and having a Braintree throw in. Really smart play. Easy to easy to concede a corner kick there, and she she refused to do so. Del Pico off the arms of number four who crosses it, and Liz Buckley is going to kick it out of bounds again. Liz Buckley holding down the fort in front of freshman goaltender Tori Viola. One man warrior, out, one woman warrior out there doing her thing defensively and uh, really just, you know, the junior showing her poise and, and control there. Shot blocked by Almeida. Brancher trying to create separation, and Liz Buckley plays it back out to midfield. Number six has it for the Womps. Brancher with pressure here. The shot is going to be picked up easily after being deflected by Liz Buckley by Tori Viola. What a defensive stand for the Brockton Boxers. Absolutely. Lara Andrade and Elizabeth Buckley doing a tremendous job there, closing in, uh, really, and just, and just pinching together to prevent uh, the Braintree shot from going anywhere near the keeper. It's going to be chased down by Yasmina Texera in the corner. And uh, already the chirping of the referees has begun from the Braintree side. Obviously a little frustration with the score as we've rolled under 20 minutes. Brockton leads 1-0. Uh, you know, that, that's to be expected. Uh, but I think, I think the Braintree girls are doing a good job of showing their resilience here and really just trying to push and even this game back up. Angelina Joyce entering the game for the Braintree Womps. Brockton able to clear it back across midfield, alleviating some of the pressure from the Womps, but Braintree's got a throw in. And everybody's standing on the Braintree sidelines, interestingly enough. I, I didn't notice if this uh, is something that occurred after Brockton scored the goal or if they've simply been standing the whole game, but uh, really, really interesting. I, I think a good show of support from the people on the bench for the Womps. That and those wooden benches are a little bit cold. Absolutely, and uncomfortable, to say the least. Here's an opportunity for Joyce. Joyce is going to try to chase it down. It's picked up very, very smartly by Tori Viola. I just, we can't say it enough. She's a freshman, and the instincts that she displays in goal is incredible. It's the single most important position on the field for any soccer team, and to be so young and to understand the game so well is truly impressive and a credit to her. Now Narita Montron trying to create some separation. It goes out of bounds off of Montron. It'll be a Braintree throwing. Give credit there to the uh, defensive senior, Adriana McDevitt, really just doing a good job keeping Montron pushed to the sidelines, uh, preventing that play from occurring. The cross is an opportunity for Braintree. The shot is going to be pulled down, and that's going to be a penalty shot for the Braintree Womps. Bad decision there by Tiana Brooks, and she just gave up a penalty shot. They looked like they got their feet tangled up, to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't see any contact with the hands, but obviously the referee felt differently, and, and boy, what a, what a time to give it up. Right after you get, you know, one goal, you have a couple good minutes defensively, and then, you know, this, this is a meltdown, and the freshman is going to have to come up big again for the boxers. We've seen... Tori Viola save a penalty shot earlier in the season. A major, a vast majority of penalty shots end up in the back of the net, especially from this short range. Viola coming out of her net to do something. Wow, that was. Uh, she, she picked up the ball. That was a little intimidating right, right there by Tori Viola. Yeah, it's almost in basketball, like when they're taking Here a free we throw, go. the opposing team will pick it up, but. Oh. 
Boy, what a what a move there by Viola. Viola is ready. The shot goes oh, wide man. to the left. And now she looks like a genius. And the intimidation factor pays off for Tori Viola. The shot going wide to the left and just a little bit high. Lily Horrigan cannot believe that she just missed that. And and really just adds insult to injury right there as Tori Viola taunted her before the free kit before the penalty shot rather. And then just and, sailed and now wide Tori left. Viola just jumped up and touched her crossbar. A little uh, a little shout to Jimmy Graham there. Of course she's gonna have to be fined fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen and a half minutes remaining in the first half. One to nothing, the score brought in on top of the Braintree Womps off of a goal by Ariana Silvia. Really just just unbelievable and, and a great a great corner sent in from Montron. You mentioned she's been taking them. Usually Caruso would be the one doing so and uh, and really just, just an unbelievable play from the senior forward. You know she's gotta be jazzed her senior year to go out in a playoff game and get a goal. Just an unbelievable feeling. And what a sign from the senior captain of this team, Jen Caruso. Braintree called the timeout. Jen Caruso made her first stop. Freshman goaltender Tori Viola to say, well done, nice job, excellent save, way to go. And I'll tell you what, Tori Viola, she's a competitor. We've seen her out here many times be the first player on the field. She takes this game very seriously, and especially in a playoff atmosphere. And this is her first game. But you know what? She feeds off the energy of these senior captains and especially, especially the confidence that oozes out of every pore of Jen Caruso's body. She is the ultimate captain, the ultimate leader. And Tori Viola is showing that she is ready to take the torch once these seniors depart at the end of the season. It's really, it's an incredible thing. So Braintree stops the clock with 15 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half. One to nothing the score. Brockton leads over the Braintree Womps off of the corner kick score headed in by Ariana Sylvia. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. We've seen pretty much a very competitive game here tonight. Brockton just able to finish one of the many opportunities, Eamon. Absolutely. I mean, and you know, give credit to Tori Viola. Uh, she's been an intimidating presence in net all night and and to say nothing of what we just saw before that penalty shot uh and and really just you know unbelievable tenacity from a freshman goalkeeper and really it has this brockton team excited brockton retaking the field with a lot of momentum coming off a goal and a missed penalty shot And Tori Viola with the intimidation factor going against the 18th seeded Braintree Womps. It's paying off. Braintree will have a throw in on the far side of the field. Really just a, a demoralizing sight there for Braintree, but obviously it's early in the game. There's 15 minutes left in the first half, so there's plenty of time for them to come back, but to have a golden opportunity like that with a penalty shot right after you get scored on is a chance that you cannot afford to miss in a playoff game. You simply just cannot do it. Uh, Tori Viola charging out Renette to pick that one up before Braintree could get a scoring opportunity out of it. Yeah, Allison O'Rourke is uh, is really just mixing it up down there, doing a great job getting herself involved. There's in, an in opportunity for the Braintree Womps. The shot is going to be picked up by Tori Viola. An excellent opportunity for the Braintree Womps. Number seven putting the shot on net. That is Melissa Madigan. Nice run down the near side of the field. Ended up getting a good shot off, but Tori Viola, not phased. Just picked it up, calm, cool, and collected. Liz Buckley clears it back out to midfield looking for Montron. Montron has it. Montron dangling, gets it up to Maria Del Pico. Del Pico back to Montron. Montron across midfield now. She looks to Spring Caruso. It's deflected and it's going to be taken by number 15 and cleared out of bounds for the Braintree Womp, Sidney Morris. Smart move there, Caruso lurking right in the middle of the field. 
trying to get a ball, trying to get a touch towards the goal. And, you know, that, that was the smart move there for the Wamps, was just to get it out of bounds, live to fight another play. Back and forth action. It'll be a Brockton throwing deep in Braintree territory. Just poor, really poor effort there by Lara Andrade on the throw and just threw it right to the Womps. Now Liz Buckley, excellent step by Elizabeth Buckley, negating the would-be opportunity. Now Del Pico looking for Montron. Montron with the acrobatic kick looking for Caruso. Caruso has it. And it's taken, it's still loose, and Fleming able to dive on it at the last minute before Maria Del Pico could get an opportunity out of it. Yeah, really just a dangerous play down there. Uh, actually, that I believe that was Anderson at the forward position. Almost had a chance to get that out from under uh, Christy Fleming, but credit the, the uh, senior keeper for the Womps, able to get back on it. Texera into Montrond. Here to Montrond pushed, no whistle. Holding and it goes out of bounds off of Braintree. Excellent hold by Narita Montrond. And uh, Narita Montrond actually tried to uh, show a little sportsmanship there and, and hold a hand out uh, to Adrian Made it with McDevitt. the one timer. It's going to go wide and we're going to have an offside called on Megan Anderson. And McDevitt was having none of it, Mad Dog. That was unbelievable. You, I mean, I, I understand, you know, competition. I think I think what Tori Viola did really got under the skin of the Swamps team and, you know, they just they kind of tipped their hand right now. We'll, we'll see what happens. This second half, I, I have a feeling, is going to get pretty chippy, Mad Dog. And we saw that there was a college football game this past weekend. Maryland refused to shake the hands of the Pitt players. And uh, it caused a bench clearing if you will brawl <laughs> hey that'll happen man i mean you know in intensity uh intensity in a battle like that will uh you know will make you do some things that you probably regret sportsmanship is one of those things that although difficult to do at times it, it really should be exercised in all aspects of competition tori deems aaron leonard and colleen hurley entering the game for the braintree womps Braintree's head coach, Matthew Freeman, looking to keep the fresh legs out there. Using platoon substitutions, which is something that, quite honestly, Brockton just simply doesn't have enough bodies to do. Now, they, don't, they didn't make a lot of substitutions when they did have a full roster, uh, but Braintree, obviously, a lot of bodies on the sidelines down there. They have fresh legs to burn, and, and uh, Coach Freeman, not afraid to put them out there. Clock ticking down to 10 minutes as it's going to be cleared out of bounds by Tiana Brooks. Oh, and she turns and has a word for Lara Andrade. Boy, this game is really, uh, they're getting really feisty out there, Mad Dog. It's a big week for the Brockton Boxers. You don't want to see a player get a couple of cards and have to sit out the next game. Of course, if Brockton would to win here tonight, they'd play Wednesday at Franklin in taking on the number two seed in the South Division. That's going to be a game where you need all hands on deck. You cannot afford Absolutely. to have any players missing. Del Pico charging up, still in bounds. Tremendous pressure put on the ball by Maria Del Pico. She gets it over to Narita Montron. Montron with trying to make a step. It's finally cleared, but not out of the zone by Braintree, and now they come up with an opportunity. It's going to be taken by Tiana Brooks, who trips up, gives it back to the Braintree Womp player. Now the shot wide, but it goes into the back of the net on the deflection. And that's what happens. That's what happens right there. A lot of intensity coming back the other way for the Womps, and uh, and Tori Viola, you know, just gave up, gave up a nice cross. Beautiful hustle there by Allison O'Rourke. Really nothing that Tori Viola could do about it. Tori Deems on the goal for the Braintree Womps off uh, of the deflected header. And Brockton's going to call their team timeout. Tori Deems really just with, uh, with a tremendous effort, but 
And that was Aaron Leonard on the goal. We've now been corrected by the fans, so that was number 20. Beautiful play there uh, on the cross from Allison O'Rourke. Um, and just just a beautiful hustle play there by the Womps. Get the ball to the middle of the field. And not even a shot needed, just a, just a deflection. So Leonard on the equalizer, tied one to one with eight minutes and 51 seconds left in the first half. Back and forth action as this game is really picking up intensity fast. When you speak of intensity, look down at Admir De Silva right now. I mean, really just pointing out things on the field, very demonstrative, obviously emotional, obviously probably a little upset. You know, he's now, you know, he's now seen this 1-0 lead fall away from his team, uh, and you got to do something to get him fired back up, and that's exactly what De Silva's trying to do right now. It's a very big week for the Brockton Boxers. Like I said, if Brockton were to win here tonight, the Lady Boxers would take on Franklin on Wednesday. Tuesday night, of course, election night, go out and vote. That's the little pitch. Yes, sir. The Brockton Boxers take on Durfee in men's playoff soccer action at Durfee. We'll have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. If they win, they play Friday against either BC High or Weymouth. Absolutely, and uh, Admir De Silva and, and uh, Laborio Alfalma getting a little talking to by the referee. Uh, we've seen that a few times. Brockton sort of just taking their time, went on home field, and and you know sort of extending timeouts. And then this is a playoff game. You know the refs aren't aren't going to allow that to happen, and and giving them a word about it right now. For entry back the other way, it's going to be out of bounds off of the Womps. Braintree continuing to push here, and, uh, you know, if, if you're Brockton, uh, you like the intensity uh, of the game so far, but I think you got to be a little bit nervous as the momentum has clearly shifted back onto Braintree's side, and th this is a very dangerous time now in the last 10 minutes of the first half for the Brockton Boxers. They need an answer before the halftime whistles. Absolutely. Number seven with the shot. It's going to go wide to the left of the goal, and it will be a goal kick for the Brockton Boxers. Uh, the junior midfield, Melissa Madigan, uh, really, again, ambitious attempt there, shooting from outside the uh, outside the 18, uh, and and that that shot didn't didn't phase the keeper at all, didn't make it really as close to the net as she had uh, she had intended. I'm sure there will be better chances on goal for her later in this game. I don't think anything is going to phase Tori Viola tonight, Amen. Well, you know, she's certainly confident out there with that display. Uh, my my only fear for her and for this Boxers team is that by doing that, you also risk angering the other team to the point of them, you know, really turning on the Jets. And you can see that Allison O'Rourke is clearly the steam engine behind this Womps team as she was the one who made that run, uh, you know, and probably said something to Tori Viola right after she saw that ball go into the net. Another opportunity for Brinch. It's going to go wide, but it's going to be whistled off sides. That's a play we've seen the Womps run a number of times this evening, uh, coming up sort of the hash marks on the football field and then sending a streaker uh, on the on the other hash, on the far hash, if you will, and trying to get a lead ball in uh, behind the defender. This Buckley plays it up. It's intercepted by the Braintree Womps. And that's O'Rourke again mixing it up. Now Aaron and Sylvia trying to turn the corner. Sylvia up to Montron. Montron to cross midfield. Looking for Crusoe, taken by number 15 of the Womps, but it's picked up by Maria Del Pico. Del Pico yeah. long looking for Crusoe. It's going to go into the awaiting arms of Christy Fleming. And Del Pico, not, not exactly the biggest girl out on the field, but she, you know, she really knows how to use her size. Uh, low center of gravity there, uses her weight effectively, and, and really just bodied. Uh, Lily Horrigan off the ball there, and a near chance for Caruso. Del Pico is one of the players on the one of the many players on the Sprockton Boxers team. Is number 24 has an opportunity for the Branch Wamps. It's cleared, kept in bounds by Liz Buckley. Now number three with an excellent move. The cross, Braintree with tremendous pressure right here. The shot. Excellent diving save by Tori Viola. Brockton escaping death right there. Angelina Joyce, uh, the freshman forward for the Womps, unable to get a good foot on that and really just, 
you know, rolled it in on, on Tori Viola. But I'm telling you, this team is pressing right now, Mad Dog. Now the shot is going to go just wide. And she's frustrated, obviously. Uh, again, another young player out here. Uh, really wanting to score and wanting to put her team on top. Uh, they've been involving her quite a bit. It's it's impressive, these young players making such an impact uh, on, on both sides of the field this evening. Brockton's defense just in a complete breakdown right now. Admir De Silva is going to look to uh, combat that, replacing, I believe that is Lara Andrade, or Yasmini Texera taking a break on the bench. So head coach Admir De Silva taking one midfielder out and putting Amanda Almeida in at the defensive position. And hopefully we'll get to see a flipping uh, throw in, if nothing else, all right? Absolutely. Always a spectacle. We were talking about it in the uh, in the beginning of the game, and uh, now Amanda Almeida is out there, and perhaps well, she won't do it right now, but I'm sure once we once we see an open opportunity, she will uh, she will delight the crowd with that. And Eamon, you talk about an intimidation factor from the Sprockton Boxers team. Jen Crusoe going for a run. She's going to have to get around to Braintree defender. Janina Crusoe Rivera. coming up with it ultimately, but it's cleared out by Braintree. And it's going to be taken by Maria Del Pico on the far side. Sorry, Mad Dog. I was going to say Janina Rivera needs to go, uh, needs to get Jerry, Jerry Connors to uh, tape her ankles up because Ari Sylvia just broke him at midfield. So you talk about an intimidation factor, I mean, what does it do if you see a player doing a flip on the sideline to inbound that ball as Del Pico is going to take a seat in favor of number 14? We're going to see the flip, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, and the Brockton Amanda fans are Almeida clapping. They know what's about to happen. up on the track, and here we go. The flip, the throw. Braintree is, uh, I hear the oohs and ahs from the crowd. Uh, that ball didn't find a home on the throw-in, Mad Dog, but uh, an impressive display nonetheless, and Brockton fans knew where we're coming. Braintree fans now know uh, the wonder that is Amanda Almeida's flipping throw-in. The ninth wonder of the world, if you will, Mad Dog. Braintree clears it up to number 24. Now taken by number three, that is... Allison O'Rourke taken back by Amanda Almeida, who steps up from her defensive position to play a little bit of offense. Megan Anderson working hard at the forward position. And just a little too long there from Ariana Almeida. I know she probably wanted to drop that ball in so Megan Anderson can make a run towards the crease, uh, but unfortunately it was not to be. It'll be a goal kick for the Womps with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half of the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs. Round number one between the Braintree Womps and the Brockton Boxers. All tied up at one apiece as Narita Montron takes it, gets it over to Caruso. Caruso looking to stop, looking to pop. Her shot is going to go into the arms of Christy Fleming. She stopped and popped, but really couldn't get it on, uh, on, uh, on an angle that would have given uh, Fleming any trouble. Fleming sending it long right to the foot of Ari Sylvia. Out of bounds off of Lara Andrade, so uh, Braintree rather will have a throw in just inside midfield. Oh, swing and a miss there from Lily Horgan as she tried to boot the ball downfield and we felt the breeze up here, Mad Dog. It's one thing we don't need tonight, Eamon, is a little breeze up when it's about 35 degrees out. Given the wind chill the past few days and how we haven't had any today, you know, yeah, we don't need any. <laughs> Sylvia pops it up to Andrade, intercepted by Braintree, and pushed out of bounds by Tiana Brooks. So Braintree will have a throw in deep in Brockton territory with time winding down here in the first half. If you're the boxers, you better know where number three is at. Allison O'Rourke is bringing the heat tonight, and she's really providing a serious presence here for the Womps, an incredible burst of speed. Uh, she she knows where her teammates are going to be. She makes good passes. She's made a few dazzling moves this evening as well, and really just a tremendous threat. And the, the boxers have got to do something. I mean, a push from behind, and that's going to be a penalty well whistled by the official on number eight for the Braintree Womps, Almeida will take the free kick. 
That was, uh, I believe that was O'Rourke, no? She was, uh, she was a little out of control at the forward position in any case. Uh, running, running a bit too fast, you know, extended those arms. That's going to be a foul every time, Mad Dog. And a good whistle by the officials with maybe about 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Nice sidearm hurl there by Christy Fleming. Impressive throw. Sylvia with it, pressuring, trying to get it out of bounds off of Braintree. Braintree wasting time off the clock. It's going to be a Brockton throw in with not much time. Brockton's going to hurry up and get this in bounds. Lara Andrade with the throw to Narita Montrand. Montrand out of bounds off of, off of Montrand, so it'll be a Braintree throw in. Yeah, this is stoppage time here. This is where, for Brockton, you, you got to be careful. You don't want to give up a cheap one at the end of the half and go in with a deficit. Liz Buckley high. The official has the whistle in his mouth. It's going to be a Brockton throw in with maybe about 10 seconds left. I'd imagine next change of possession, the whistles are going to blow. As Ariana Sylvia looks up for a Jen Crusoe, it's taken by Christy Fleming. And she kicks it long. Official looking at his watch with the whistle in the mouth. Braintree has it, maybe one more opportunity out of the Womps, but it's very nicely broken up by number seven for the Brockton Boxers. Ariana Almeida doing a good job there defensively. O'Rourke, I'm telling you, the ball, once the ball finds her, she's always trying to do something with it offensively. Uh, she's done it a number of times this evening, and I think finally the defensive keys have been put on her, and you saw that from Ariana Almeida on that play. Ball out of bounds more in the last minute than most of the game. Been good, very good pace of play so far in this game, Mad Dog, like you just talked Sylvia about. Sylvia with an excellent move, looking to get it up to Narita Montrand. Sylvia's going to turn the corner and looking for Megan Anderson. Anderson chasing it down. She's going to stop it, and it's going to go out of bounds off of Brancher. It'll be a one last Brockton throw in with not much time at all on the clock. Sylvia to Anderson. Anderson with it in the corner. Makes a really nice move, and the cross goes all the way back out to the corner. Brockton with one last opportunity. Ariana Sylvia... And it's going to be cleared by the Braintree Womps out of bounds. I think the officials must have left their stopwatches at home. Angelina Joyce has and burners for the Womps. The whistle sounds to end the first half. An excellent pace of play in the first half. Ultimately ending up with a 1-1 tie. The Braintree Womps and the Brockton Boxers. Eamon, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, just great action. You said a pace of play. Incredible offensive chances galore. Defenses doing their best to adjust. We've seen both keepers make good saves. What else do you want from a playoff, dog? It is an excellent playoff game shaping up here at Marciano Stadium. My broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. I'm Matt Dogman Nelson. We will see you for the second half. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. Soccer fans of all ages, welcome back to Marciano Stadium for the second half of action between the Braintree Womps and your Brockton Boxers, the first round of the MIAA South Sectional Tournament Action. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. Eamon, what did you see in the first half? Well, Mad Dog, really just an impressive effort by both teams. Brockton goes on top early, scoring in the, uh, in the 14th minute. Uh, as Ari Sylvia is able to put a beautiful header in from Montron. But give the Womps credit, they battled back, and they get a goal from Aaron Leonard on a beautiful pass from Allison O'Rourke. Uh, and it was, was able to beat keeper Tori Viola, uh, who we talked about had an impressive uh, display of, of fire out there on the penalty kick. And, uh, and we're, we're back for the second half, Mad Dog. And Braintree stacking the back line with Five players to start this second half as Ariana Almeida steps up on the Braintree player. It's going to go out of bounds off of Braintree on the far sideline. Interesting play there by Angelina Joyce. She's done that a few times, sort of kicked the ball to herself almost. She has incredible speed. Uh, she's displayed it a number of times here tonight, and she tried to do that same thing again, but the ball just trickled out of bounds. One to one the score to begin this second half. And the game getting very chippy, especially late in that first period, Eamon. It 
makes for a very, very competitive second half. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's all you can expect is that the intensity is just going to continue to build, and, and both teams understand the stakes here. I mean, this is the playoffs. It's win or go home, and, and neither of these teams are trying to do that, uh, as, as, as you see by the 1-1 score and the – obvious chippiness that you know that you talked about that we witnessed in the first half. Sylvia for Caruso the hill turn to Montron. Montron with a semi breakaway she's held up no whistle she's still got the ball she brings it down into the corner stops she's still got it crossing up defenders left and right and she finally unable to connect with the self pass it goes out of bounds off of Braintree and Montron will take the throw in uh, rather Tiana Brooks Good rush there for the Brockton Boxers, led by Narita Montrond. But it's Amanda Almeida, we're going to see the flip. Sorry to cut you off. No worries. That was a particularly good one. Found Montrond right in the middle of the field. Montrond back for Maria Del Pico. Del Pico looking for Caruso. Caruso back to Sylvia. Sylvia up for looking for Del Pico. The one-time shot is going to go well wide and... It will be a goal kick for the Braintree Womps. A good offensive pressure to start the second half, Eamon. Absolutely. A couple of good rushes there. Narita Montron continuing to be a force in this game. And that, that rush that you just talked about, Mad Dog, was started by a beautiful back heel by Jen Caruso in the middle of the field. Not only can she score, she's an unselfish player when she wants to be and able to get her teammates involved as displayed on that last rush. Liz Buckley up for Ariane Almeida. It's intercepted by number 11 of the Womps. That is Lily Horrigan. <coughs> Del Pico back to Almeida. Almeida all the way up looking for Caruso. Now Del Pico has it. That's deflected by Braintree and out of bounds off Braintree. Brockton will have a throw deep in Womps territory. That was a nice play there by uh, Brooke Yen, the senior defense woman for the Womps, uh, able to trap that ball as it was coming down and uh, and keep it away from Michaela Robinson, who actually has just checked into the game for the boxers to start this second half. Really nice play there by the Womps. Excellent step up by Amanda Almeida to prevent a Womps opportunity, but they will have a throw in. Boxers matching up. Very nicely here defensively, keeping uh, keeping one player on one player, really just trying to stay in front and uh, continue to push towards uh, that, that second and potentially uh, game-winning goal. Rita Montron trying to gain possession. Ariana Sylvia is holding her stomach area and not running at 100% right now. Yeah, she does look a little bit hobbled. Not, not quite sure what happened. Hopefully she just got the wind knocked out of her a little bit and she'll be back. Uh, give the Womps credit here. They've they've come out in the second half with a bit of a different strategy. I think they've been a little more patient in the opening minutes here. Uh, and so far, not, not paying off in a goal. But On the far side, Brockton has it. Braintree's defense, the four people on the back line able to break up that opportunity before it could turn into a shot. And uh, really just, you know, nice defensive play there um, for the Womps, able to uh, able to sort of keep it away from any, any serious chance there, as that was almost a beautiful pass by Narita Montron, volleyed it off her chest uh, and, and turned and, Lobbed it towards the middle of the field, but good step up defensively for the Womps. Now Braintree with an opportunity the other way in transition. Number 24 chasing it down on the far side. And it's going to go out of bounds off of Braintree. Braintree was lobbying for a throw-in for the Womps, but it turns into a Brockton throw-in. And Angelina Joyce, again, displaying the, the blazing speed that she obviously has. Uh, and really just a tremendous effort by her. Now Braintree going the other way. Number 20, who has the goal with the opportunity. Liz Buckley is going to clear it. 
And Erin Leonard there for the Wamps doing her best uh, best job to put another point on the board. You said it. She scored the goal earlier in the game looking for an assist there, but unable to find the middle of the field. And Rita Montron on the near side for Jen Caruso. Jen Caruso up, turning on the Jets. Jen Caruso with the cross. The initial save by Fleming, and she's able to dive on the rebound. An excellent opportunity created by the girl wonder for the Brockton Boxers, Jen Caruso. Absolutely, Mad Dog. Blazing speed down there towards the goal line extended, looking towards the middle of the field for Michaela Robinson. And give Christy Fleming a lot of credit because she stepped up, made a tough save on a really hard kick, and, and was able to fall on it before Robinson uh, could get to it and put it in the back of the net. Short seven minutes into this action-packed second half. Still all tied up. One goal apiece between the Brockton Boxers and Braintree Wamps. Now Narita Montron streaking upfield. She turns on the Jets. And she kind of stops, weighs her options. She's pushed, no whistle. And she's dragged down, still no whistle. The referees are letting them play here in the second half. And Brockton's going to have a throw in. Kind of an ill-advised throw in there for Amanda Almeida. Rushed that one looking for Montron. And really, if she had taken a second, she would have found Ari Silvia. I would have liked to see the flip again, but I'm a little bit uh, biased. She just wanted to get back in there. You appreciate her pushing the intensity if you're admired to Silva. Uh, but that, that, was a little, uh, that was a little unabashed. Now Liz Buckley unable to step up. And Braintree coming up with an opportunity. Tiana, uh, Tori Viola rather, with an excellent diving save. Allison O'Rourke getting in the mix again, Mad Dog. She's she's here to stay. This girl is is quite a problem for the boxers. Uh, you know, making a beautiful play on that goal in the first half that Aaron Leonard scored, and now again streaking towards the middle and looking for a goal herself. Number seven, Melissa Madigan, whose name we've called a couple of times tonight, getting ready to enter the game for the Braintree Wamps. As is Yasmina Teixeira, the uh, the senior defender who is back for Brockton in this game after missing a few contests after taking a pretty stiff collision a few weeks ago in a game here in Brockton. The uh, the cart was brought out for her. It was a bit of a scary moment, but obviously she's okay. She's back on the field. We'd like to see that. Now Yasmini Texera replacing Amanda Almeida. And Lily Horrigan coming off the field for the Womps, grabbing a water, stretching out the legs, having a breather. A little bit of confusion. Lara Andra thought that Texera was substituting for her. She also ran off to the Brockton bench and then realizing that Brockton would not have had enough players. Excellent play by Ariana Sylvia to get the ball up for Jen Caruso, but it's taken back over by the Womps. Yeah, and really just a bit of confusion there. You can't be playing with only 10 players, of course, unless you know, you've received a red card or something, but good job by the coaching staff and by the girls to get back out there and the crisis was averted, as they say. Believe it or not, Eamon, there was a situation. Brockton down in New Bedford a couple of weeks ago. Of course, New Bedford, the men's soccer team, ranked number one in the state. Brockton's player got a red card, and they had to play with ten players for the remainder of that game. For the majority, about 45 minutes, I was told. An incredibly tough task. Uh, for, for any team to play without a player, but especially in soccer. I mean, you would think with 11 people on the field, including the goalkeeper, you'd be able to make it work with just 10, but it, it, it shows immediately, and it shows on every offensive rush, every defensive possession in the midfield. It's, it's really it's, it's a detriment, but that's the penalty you pay for getting a red card. And Braintree's going to have their first corner kick of the game. And uh, down there on the sidelines, we have Lily Horrigan just uh, getting stretched out. So she was shaking out her legs before, probably just worried she's going to cramp up a little bit. But she appears to be all right. A wasted opportunity for the Braintree Womps as they went with a short pass, tried to give and go, and it didn't work. Brockton able to sniff it out immediately and coming up with a goal kick. Yeah, O'Rourke really, uh, you know, 
pressing now, uh, for lack of a better word, pushing uh, towards another goal, and, and that was definitely an ill-advised shot. But again, you know, you you got to shoot to score. Keanu Brooks kicks it about 35 yards on the football marking. And it goes out of bounds off of Braintree. It'll be a Brockton throw in. Aaron Leonard down here on the near sidelines, uh, trying to get that ball, just unable to uh, corral it along the sidelines. And again, unable to corral it along the sidelines is Leonard, and it goes out of bounds again. Montrond up for Caruso. Doesn't connect out of bounds off of Braintree. Now Andrade up to Montron. Montron back to Sylvia. Out of bounds again off of Braintree. Brockton slowly but surely moving this ball upfield. Now Andrade for Jen Caruso to the corner for Narita Montron. Montron breaks the ankles and it goes out of bounds off of Montron. So Braintree able to escape a pretty daunting task of this Brockton Boxers offense coming away with a goal kick. Not only is Jen Caruso a powerful force, but she is quite a tremendous finesse player when she wants to be, as demonstrated by that pass right there. That is such a difficult play to make, a short little turning ball that stays in so that your teammate can get to it, and she made it look easy. Tori Viola about 30 yards out of her net. Body's flying everywhere here at Marciano Stadium, and the refs keep the whistles in the pocket. You gotta like them letting the physicality happen. This is a playoff game. Soccer is a contact sport, believe it or not, Mad Dog. It'll be a goal kick for the Brockton Boxers. And we have Branchy substitution number 17 entering the game. That is Molly Moore. First, uh, first action of the night for Moore. We'll. Uh... We'll see if she's ready to go here in this playoff game. Got to love to have your number called in a situation like this. You've been sitting on the bench all night waiting for your chance. Obviously, she's ready to go, and we'll see if she can make an impact for the Womps. Absolutely. Ariana Almeida clears it out of bounds. And the uh, young ball boy doing his best to keep, uh, keep play moving here. We salute him for that effort. Now Caruso with the ball, she oversteps it a little bit and Braintree able to clear it back the other way. Good stingy defense by the Braintree Womps. Absolutely, and another freshman making a contribution, Mad Dog. That was Sidney Morris stepping up on the senior Caruso. And you get, doesn't matter how old you are, what position you play, you know the scouting report. Number 22 comes to play, and that was a beautiful, beautiful job defensively by the Womps. An ill-advised throw by Lara Andrade goes right to the branch of Wamps, but they put it right back out of bounds. Now Andrade, Andrade for Montron. Montron with the cross. Branchy able to clear it out of immediate danger. Tixera missteps it. And number 20 for the Brockton Boxers clears it out of bounds. The patience of this Womps team is incredible. Not not allowing themselves to get out of position uh, on the back end here, really taking their time, trying to find the best chance uh, possible to take a lead in this game. Number 14 for the Brockton Boxers, that is Michaela Robinson. Applying pressure to the Womps defense, trying to get that ball up to Jen Caruso. Lily Horrigan getting ready to come back into the game for the Womps. Good to see she's okay. Both teams clearly packing it in. We've seen a lot more possession in the midfield area in this second half than we did certainly in the first half. Uh, much more end-to-end -end running, more offensive chances to speak of in the first half. Um, but it, it's to be expected. Both coaches obviously making some good adjustments, trying to take away this, the strengths of either team. Uh, and the fact that we have not seen a goal yet uh, 16 minutes into the second half is, is a testament to the adjustments that were made. And it looks like we have an injured player down here. I didn't see the number, but I believe that's Allison O'Rourke, the, uh, the speedster for the Womps. And she's down. She's holding that foot. Don't know if she got stepped on 
or what happened, but she's going to get checked out. That uh, is number three for the Womps. And uh, Kara Hines is the trainer, and she's taking a look now at O'Rourke as she's going to put on a jacket and try and stay warm here. Really a tough sign. She appears to be in a lot of pain and assisting on that goal. She's been in on pretty much every offensive rush for the Womps tonight, and that is a huge, huge loss for their team. Absolutely, and they are looking at the right leg of O'Rourke. And she's visibly in pain. I mean, she came off holding. She barely made it to the sidelines before she fell down and now just sort of hunched over, you know, almost writhing in pain, trying to trying to work it out or do something. And, you know, you see her teammate Angelina Joyce now, the freshman, coming over to console her as she tries to put a little bit of pressure on it. She appears to be holding the top of her foot and the front area of it, so I'm wondering if she got cleated, something that hurts a lot more than, than many people think it would especially at full speed and full force. I can, you know, it, it, with all the small bones in your foot, it's safe to say that something of that nature could definitely break or crack, fracture a bone. So obviously Absolutely. we hope that's not the case, but, you know, definitely, you know, something to keep an eye on here. And she is now down on the ground with the trainer looking at that right foot area. It looks like the low ankle that they're working on. As Brencher comes up with an opportunity, number 20. Excellent slide tackle by Elizabeth Buckley. And lobbying for a call there was Aaron Leonard, the lone goal scorer for the Womps. But I got to be honest, I think that was a good play. That Really physical. I mean, Leonard went flying, but Buckley went straight for the ball and just happened to catch her with a good part of her own hip. The shot into the hands of Tori Viola, stretching out all the way to make the fingertip save. The freshman goalkeeper for the Brockton Box is making a number of excellent saves tonight, Eamon. And showing strides throughout the course of the season. That was a ball that would have given her far more trouble earlier in the season. We saw a number of teams be able to score high on her from the outside. And obviously, Laborio Alfalma and this coaching staff, as long as Amir De Silva have, have been working with her on that, and it showed right there. She made a great save backing up and catching the ball over her head. Brockton working the short passing game. Del Pico now tries to send it long for a mantra and doesn't connect. It'll be a Braintree throw in. And again, you, you're starting to see some more chances. Now it's starting to, starting to open up a little bit more. You got, you know, 19 minutes gone. So you're right about the halfway mark in the second half. This is when you start, again, making some more adjustments. The, the score is still tied. Obviously, you want to get a goal in regulation and get out of here with a win and, and go on to play in Franklin on Wednesday night. Uh, but, you know, that being said, you got to get the goal here, and uh, both teams are probably going to be pushing a little more offensively here the last half of the uh, second period. And you talk about adjustments. Head coach Admiral De Silva just substituted uh, Mackenzie O'Reilly, who is a forward for a midfielder in Maria Del Pico. So Brockton looking to turn on the offensive pressure here in the last quarter of the game. especially with the loss of Braintree's big offensive powerhouse, Allison O'Rourke. You can tell. I mean, the you know Braintree a little bit more hesitant, less movement on the offensive end. Brockton clearly poised. You know, no one wishes for an injury, but when you see a star player go down for the other team, you, start, you sort of start licking your chops. Caruso tries to turn the corner in the middle of the field and sends it long, taken by the Womps. And now a Braintree player goes down, no whistle. And she tried to step up on Yasmina Teixeira, and Teixeira just split the gap right there. That was beautiful. Montron has it. Teixeira back to Montron. Montron with the cross looking for Caruso. Doesn't connect. Braintree able to clear it out for the moment. Good job by Horrigan in the middle of the field there, not allowing Caruso to get that ball in a beautiful position to score. Montron doing her best to, to feed the ball into the center of the field, but just unable to do so. Laura Andrade with the bad step now. Number 20, Erin uh, Leonard going back the other way. She still has it. Liz Buckley looking to step up. She does and gets it out of bounds. It'll be a Braintree throw in. Leonard was frustrated earlier. Nothing would leave that frustration better than scoring another goal in this contest, taking a 2-1 lead. And obviously she, she looks poised to try and do that for the Womps. Just across the halfway mark here in the second half of action, still all tied up at one goal apiece. Between the Braintree Womps and the Brockton Boxers, I'm Mad Dog Man Nelson alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey, bringing you all the action from a very cold Marciana Stadium this 
November 3rd, Monday night. And the playoffs are here, Mad Dog, and the atmosphere uh, will, will tell it all. These girls are playing with a lot of intensity. The fans are into it. You know, a lot of heckling of the referees and cheering on, you know, their own players and, and things of that nature. And uh, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time when the playoffs come around and a lot of, uh, a lot of intensity in the city about, about high school sports and especially, you know, when it comes down to the nitty-gritty. Absolutely. And Brockton looking to avenge one thing we haven't mentioned the 5-2 to two loss last year to Bishop Fian in the first round of the playoffs. It's always a tough thing to go out in the first round. You work so hard to make it to the playoffs, and, and to get beat in the first game is absolutely crushing. But, you know, what can you do? You come back next year, you come back stronger, and you try and win that game. You try and make it one step farther towards the ultimate goal of winning the championship. And if Brockton would be so lucky to make it that far, Bishop Fian is ranked number one in the state again. And another undefeated team, and in fact, they only have one tie. So a, a extremely unblemished record. Really just incredible what they've been able to do this season, ripping off 15, 16 straight wins, and, and just they're, they're a powerhouse. I'm, but I'm sure Brockton uh, would not back down from the opportunity to get a little revenge on them from last year. Absolutely. And the Braintree throne goes to the leg of Ariana Almeida, who is able to knock it out of bounds, it'll be another brain tree throw in. Womp's getting good sustained pressure here in the uh, in the offensive zone, and uh, Brockton would do best to clear it out before they're able to put something in the net. Riley up to Crusoe. Crusoe not really able to handle it, but she gets it back to Mackenzie O'Reilly. O'Reilly oversteps it, and brain tree back the other way. Lara Andrade now with the excellent heel stop. Beautiful defense there as she's spinning around, able to stop the ball and uh, and keep Aaron Leonard uh, from making a run to the outside. Really great defense there by Andrade. Braintree, like you said, with great sustained pressure here in the last couple of minutes. Now a shot across. Excellent save by Tori Viola and Braintree ultimately able to put it in the net. I believe that was Aaron Leonard with her second of the game. It sure was. Great run up the far sidelines by Angelina Joyce. Almost like the first goal that they scored, too. Obviously, that's a play that they work on. You get you get the wide run, right? You get defenders running towards you. What does that leave open? The middle of the field, and they've scored now twice there on that same play, and Aaron Leonard has done it yet again. Another dagger for the Womps as they take a 2-1 to -one lead over the Boxers. And this is crunch time. I mean, for Admir De Silva, this you're going to find out what you got right now. I know, you know, you work all season and you try your hardest to continue to improve and stuff, but this is this is where the rubber meets the road right now. 15 minutes left in this game. You're down one goal. What do you do? Do you come back and win it, or are you unable to do so and your season's over? Jen Caruso with an opportunity. Her shot, she runs into Christy Fleming. Boy, and that looked like a football play. That was like a a line or a safety trying to tackle a tight end and Christy Fleming took an incredible shot there from Jen Caruso bounces right back up credit her she is she is one tough cookie and it's going to be a corner kick to be taken by Narita Montrand this is a tremendous chance here for the boxers she's going to curve it in towards the net see Christy Fleming pointing out the defensive assignments the shot off the hands, it's loose in the box. Braintree able to clear it. And Braintree able to escape danger for the moment. A one-time shot from about 40 yards out from Lara Andrade goes into the awaiting arms of Fleming. A good opportunity for the Brockton Boxers, but ultimately Fleming comes up big again. Absolutely, talk about a squandered chance there for Brockton. Beautiful cross in, Fleming gets a hand on it, able to deflect it, and Tiana Brooks took a rip, like you said, Mad Dog, from about 35 yards uh, that just had no chance of scoring and no chance of finding a teammate at the same time. Oh, and finally a, a foul call, call here. Push called on number 14 for the Brockton boxers, Michaela Robinson. Eamon, let's go back to the Braintree goal. An incredible initial save by Tori Viola. And Braintree just able to push the ball out from under her into the back of the net. Absolutely. I mean, just, you know, credit credit the tenacity and just the willingness to keep kicking at the ball. 
you never know. I mean, it's tough when you're standing over someone. It's hard to tell if they're on the ball or not. As uh, Braintree fans a little unhappy with this call here. It uh, looks like it's going to remain a Brockton throw-in. But, yeah, I mean, Tori Viola did everything she could. She nearly fell on the ball again, but Aaron Leonard just able to poke her foot underneath. The ball trickles in, and you saw Tori Viola slam her hand on the ground. That, that's got to be one of the most frustrating goals she's ever given up in her life. Now Del Pico back into the game looking to start something offensively. And just, just a bit too aggressive on that run, trying to go straight up the field all by herself. Womps did a good job of packing it in defensively and sinking back towards their keeper. Del Pico would have been wise to make that initial move, control the ball, and then look for another teammate. Now we're going to have a timeout called by Braintree, I believe. And this is the time. Admir De Silva's got to take an opportunity of this timeout and he's going to get some spark into his boxer's offense. I mean, you look at him now down on the field, and, and you see the intensity here. He's really trying to rally his girls to get another goal. This is it, and I'm sure that's exactly what he's saying to them. This is the end of your season. Don't leave anything out on the field. That is the worst mistake that you can make as an athlete, is to feel like you left something out on the field, like you didn't give it your all. These girls have just got to put 13 minutes and 39 seconds of the hardest working soccer they've ever played in their lives in. And with any luck, they'll be able to come out with a victory. Right now trailing 2-1 to one behind the Braintree Womps with just under 14 minutes remaining. And a couple of goals by Aaron Leonard has put this Braintree Womps team in a position to succeed, even without the loss of their star, Allison O'Rourke. Really just a, a tough loss, and she's still working down there on the sidelines. You can see she's visibly upset, whether it's the pain or just the realization that perhaps she may not be able to come back into this game. It's crushing, but you know what? Give the Braintree Womps a lot of credit. To see your leader, one of your best players, go down in the, in the fashion that O'Rourke did and to be able to come back down the field and score another goal, that's got to feel great, and, and you know you know they tried to put it in the back of the net for O'Rourke. You know they weren't just doing it for themselves. They want to get one for number three who looks like she won't be able to return to this game. Goes out of bounds off of Brockton. It'll be a Braintree throw. Luckily for O'Rourke, she is a junior, so, you know, you, you would hate – for this, you know, God forbid for this to be her last game if she was a senior. You know, luckily for her, she if she's not able to return and if Braintree is not able to advance, you know, she's going to get another shot next year uh, to, uh, you know, to advance in the playoffs. And, and Sylvia up for Caruso, an opportunity for the Brockton Boxers. Jen Caruso has it in the corner. Her cross looking for Montron into the arms of Fleming. The ball is stopped. And it's going to be another save for Christy Fleming. That was a great, great stop by Fleming as she had not only Megan Anderson, but Adriana McDevitt, her own defender, bearing down on her. McDevitt appeared to take the worst of the blow. Uh, and Fleming has already taken some contact tonight. And the Braintree fans erupt in displeasure at the call of a Brockton free kick from the 33-yard line. You gotta, you gotta give the referees credit. They've done, as, you know, about as good a job as they can tonight. Uh, and he was standing right there, so you also have to give him the benefit of the doubt on that call. It wasn't like he was looking at it from across the field. He was right there. Almeida looking up for Del Pico, who's shifted up to the forward position. Well, it's Megan Anderson rather. And, you know, if you're the Womps, you, you got to know Brockton's going to continue to push. Now you're up 2-1. You see that they have five girls uh, on the back line, obviously trying to protect against that game-tying goal. Uh, and you just got to continue to pack it in and just, you know, continuing to work hard and hustle defensively and not, you know, not allow the boxers to get back in this game. Yeah, Del Pico sending one long, looking for Caruso, who didn't think she had an opportunity to track that one down. Veteran move by Fleming, waiting to pick that ball up, wasting precious seconds off of that clock. Every second counts here for the Brockton Boxers. 
Yep, you said it, Mad Dog. That is a veteran move. You know, with the running clock in soccer, you can afford to do things like that, and it's you know, it, it's a good strategy. It, as frustrating as it might be, if you're a Boxers fan or a Boxers player or coach, you know, it's a smart move, and and I'm sure they would, you know, they would have Tori Viola do the same thing. Were the were the favors revor- reversed in this game? Now an opportunity. The shot. That's a goal for the Brockton Boxers. Christy Fleming. Megan Anderson with the equalizer for the Boxers. Fleming making the initial save, but Anderson staying strong, able to put that one in the back of the net. We have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. Brockton. Just really an unbelievable effort there from Megan Anderson and eerily similar to the goal that Emily Leonard just scored down the other end. Megan Anderson says anything you can do, I can do better, and that ties the game. Great adjustment there from Admir to Silva. You see the aggressive play from the Brockton Boxers. We got a tie game, 10 minutes left in the second half, Mad Dog. Can you feel the excitement? You can feel it. The crowd just came alive for this Brockton team with about 10 minutes remaining, and Braintree now shifting from five people on the back line to four with many more people at the midfield position. Still trying to apply some offensive pressure now. Absolutely. Well, you know, they I, they were packing it in. They were doing the best they could. Megan Anderson, tremendous speed. You know, just a great run right up the middle of the field. Brockton's been trying to do that all night. Finally, it works. Fleming comes out on an aggressive line, and unfortunately, sometimes that's what happens if you're the Womps. But, you know, they, they're going to have to show their resilience now. Jen Caruso with an excellent move, trying to split two defenders. She goes down, no whistle. She's asking for a call, doesn't get one. But it's going to be a Brockton thrown from right in front of their own bench. Yeah, and she's really lobbying for a call here. But, you know, at least give the refs credit. They're, they're calling very little on both sides. They're letting both teams play and play physically at that. Russo looking to turn a corner. She does. The cross goes out of bounds. It'll be a Brockton throwing by about a foot. What a stroke of luck there. Adriana McDevitt turns her back, ball bounces off of her, and instead of going out for a corner, rolls out for about the shortest throw in you could possibly have. Now Caruso with the shot. What a save by Fleming. And give Fleming a lot of credit because you, you could see Caruso turned, but Fleming was already moving towards the spot where Caruso was shooting from, able to get two hands on that rocket from Jen Caruso and then frustrated with herself there she kicks it out of bounds another chance here for the boxers on a short and out of bounds kick but Braintree takes it back the other way able to intercept the throw in and now Braintree is going to have it make a couple of substitutions Aaron Leonard who scored both of the Braintree goals re-entering the game along with number 14 that is Brittany Coyne another new name being called for the Wops. Yep, and they have a deep bench, and they've they've used quite a lot. And we've now seen Leonard. Uh, this is the second time she will have come off in this game. So using the substitutions really nicely is uh, Matthew Freeman, the coach for the Womps, and getting Leonard the rest that she needs. Who knows? Maybe that'll pay dividends, and uh, you know, and allow her to score another goal for a hat trick. The way this game has gone so far, Eamon, there would be no fitting end unless it goes to penalty kicks. Both you know, Viola and Fleming have been incredible this evening. Both the prolific scores for each side have been fantastic. And really the on, only way to settle this would be penalty kicks as Del Pico tries to chase it down into the corner. She is able to do so. She stops, gets it back over to Ariana Silvia who crosses it into the middle of the box. Gets it right back. Sylvia applying the pressure now for Brockton, and it's going to be a goal kick for the Womps. Turn of events there, Ari Sylvia thinking she's going to have a run down the field, and then defenders just draped all over her, including Adriana McDevitt, who's really been mixing it up on the defensive end. Uh, But, you know, you're you're talking about a 2-2 game now with seven minutes left. If this game were to go uh, into penalties, you know, or extra extra time, you got to think that Brockton would have a little bit of an advantage simply because they have all of their best players out on the field, whereas the Womps are still going to be missing Allison O'Rourke at the end of the day, and she was an incredible spark plug for this team as long as she was in the game, and she's been sitting there now fairly dejectedly for a while. It does not appear as though she's going to be able to return, and that is a massive loss for the Braintree Womps. Number seven, Melissa Madigan getting ready to again re-enter the game for the Womps. 
Not quite sure what, what Caruso was trying to do there. She had uh, she had room to turn around and move. We're gonna have a whistle called against Brockton and Del Pico pushing down one of the womps. It'll be a free kick. Yeah, and just, you know, an aggressive play. Now the refs are starting to call a little bit more than they were earlier in the game. I think they sense that, you know, the pushing is getting to uh, a more extreme level. They don't want this game to get out of hand. That's the last thing you want in a playoff game. Uh, and, you know, they've called a couple couple fouls here just to make sure the girls know that they're not, you know, they're not just going to let anything fly. Back and forth action across midfield here with five and a half minutes remaining in regulation time in the MIAA Salt Sectional Tournament. Round number one between the Braintree Womps and your Brockton Boxers all tied up at two. And we're going to have ourselves a heck of a finish, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, 2-2 game and, you know, both teams really pushing for a goal here. You know, you see players doing as much as they can and Emily Lettern, the uh, the two-time goal scorer this evening, circling back to the defensive end. Everybody's doing their part, just trying to get that one goal that will uneven this, this score and, and hopefully give their team a playoff victory. It's going to be a free kick for the Braintree Womps just inside midfield with under five minutes remaining. Megan Anderson and Ari Sylvia, the goal scorers for Brockton. And they're looking to spark something. A Sabrinchy player will one time it from about 45 yards out, easily picked up by Tori Viola, who has been outstanding in net tonight. Absolutely, and, and once again, Angelina Joyce, the tremendously talented freshman for the Womps, bearing down on her as she has been most of this game. But Viola, as she has looked all season and even in this playoff game, very poised even after giving up a couple goals, continuing to do her thing. Caruso looking for Anderson. It's going to be picked up by Fleming without a shot. Nice little rollout, too. Instead of waiting to uh, to kick that, had a player on the far side of the field, that's Adriana McDevitt, and rolled the ball out to her and was able to uh, to get it away. As you see, Tori Viola come up and kick that one away as bearing down on her was Janina Ribeiro for the Womps. Excellent stop by Lara Andrade. She was falling to the ground to get that ball to Maria Del Pico, who sends it long. And it's going to roll out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick for... The Womps, number seven, re-entering the game. That is Melissa Madigan. The effort of uh, Megan Anderson for the for the boxers in the second half has been incredibly impressive. Even on that last play right there, like you saw, uh, not obviously had no chance of getting that ball, but still running full speed after it as it goes out of bounds, just keeping herself in tune. You know, keeping keeping the intensity up, and you really you love to see that from a player who, you know, has started to make a lot of contributions later in the season for the boxers. Absolutely, now down to three minutes remaining in regulation time here at Marciano Stadium. Braintree threatening, Liz Buckley will clear it out of bounds. Excellent move by Liz Buckley to kick it out of bounds off of the Braintree player. It'll be a Brockton throw in. Yep, a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill go into a play like that, but well executed by Buckley and able to secure a throw in for the boxers. Now, Braintree with an opportunity. Aaron Leonard trying to chase it down is unable to do so. It'll be a Braintree throw, and I thought that went out of bounds off of Braintree, but the referee is seeing differently. And Braintree now getting a little bit of possession here, and this is a dangerous spot for the Here's Brockton Leonard. Doctors. Leonard with the cross. Nobody was on the other end. And that's going to go out of bounds off of Braintree. Melissa Madigan in the middle of the field with kind of a lackadaisical effort there. I mean, the ball was was sort of sailing over there. Tiana Brooks able to step up, but Madigan had a chance to get in front of that and put a shot on Viola and just chose not to. And Caruso, a little bit frustrated with herself, kicks it out, out of bounds. Not something you see often. Now out of bounds off of Lara Andrade. Braintree will have a throw and Leonard will take it. Straight to the stomach of Lara Andrade. Del Pico up for Caruso. Caruso can't curl the pass. And it goes all the way back to Ariana Silvia. But Braintree able to get a good slide tackle, in, but taken by Tiana Brooks. Now Del Pico the other way. Looking up for Anderson. 
Megan Anderson applying the pressure with under two minutes to go. Oh, good job to step in front there and steal the ball. Beautiful and play Pico, by Anderson. The one-timer is going to fall short and wide, and Fleming will pick it up with not much time here in regulation. Not sure if she caught that awkwardly off the boot or if Del Pico simply kicked it off the defender. That ended up being, being a pretty weak chance there for the boxers. They would have liked a stronger shot on net as Fleming has been tremendous all night. Liz Buckley chasing it down and kicking it out of bounds. If I were Elizabeth, I would have held that and turned the corner and tried to kick it long back to midfield. Sylvia held up. Still in bounds, out of bounds off of Braintree and not much time left here in regulation. Rita Montron tries to pop it up to herself, no luck, and Braintree will have a throw. Emily Leonard just doing everything in her power to will another goal out of this Wamps team. She's been hustling all over the field. Offensive and defensive side has both the goals. You know, she really is just tr trying everything in her arsenal to get this team on to the next round. Now back across midfield with not much time at all. Narita Montron, it's Brockton has numbers. Jen Caruso. Had a little bit of a break, but Braintree's powerful defensive line here in the second half able to break it up. Brockton has a throw with the referees looking at their watches. Yep, and this one's really coming down to it, of course, like we expected. Now Jen Caruso, it's picked up by Fleming before Caruso can get a decent shot off. Fleming swings around to her left and just snatches that ball up as Caruso running full speed with intent to end this game in dramatic fashion. And now and a nasty collision without a whistle. Angelina Joyce goes down hard and, and we have a whistle. She, she ran into Megan Anderson. Boy, and that that was a really tough fall. She was elevated off the ground. She was off balance and that and was an looks, extremely hard collision. It looks like her head hit the shoulder of Anderson. And also perhaps may have hit the ground too because you know she was she was really splayed out there after the contact. And you know, we we hope it's we hope it's not too bad. She took an, an incredible spill out there. Uh, and the referees have called a halt to this game. Both the teams are gonna huddle up. And uh, really just incredible pace continued on from the first half. Jerry um, bringing the cart out onto the field right now. Not a good sign at all. Nope, that's, that's pretty quick with the cart, but, uh, you know, with, with any luck, just maybe knock the wind out of her, a little shaken up. You know, you hope, you hope that, uh, you know, such a young player, a freshman like Angelina Joyce, uh, you know, is able to, uh, to pick herself up off the field here. And, and you know, we, we hope, uh, we sincerely hope that she's all right. So Jerry Connors bringing out the cart. It's been a fairly quiet night for Jerry as far as Brockton boxes injuries go. Braintree of course the big injury to O'Rourke who is still down on the sideline. Just a scary scene if uh, if you're a Womps fan. Angelina Joyce going down really hard. She is moving around a little bit on the ground. I see them stretching out her legs and and stuff. That's that's a very good sign. Uh, you know, you just you hope that she didn't hit her head too hard on the turf, or as you said, on the shoulder. And now she sits up. That's that's a wonderful sign. She's going to get to her feet. So we're we're very very glad to see that. Obviously, she's a little woozy. You can't can't take that much contact and uh, you know and not be dazed a bit. But the fact that she's standing up is uh, is an extremely good sign. A little bit of a conference between the injured Womp, the coach, and Braintree's trainer. And, you know, for good reason. I mean, this has been a very physical game. Obviously, if you're a coach, your main job, your main duty is to protect your players and to advocate for your players. Uh, and that's exactly, that's exactly what trainer Kara Hines and head coach Matt Freeman uh, did right there. That's Angelina Joyce making her way to 
the sideline under her own power, which is a good thing to see. So hopefully just winded. Yep, and uh, refusing to take the jacket too. Obviously, and here she's we go, won. a jump kick for it's the like, second time this season, Eamon. We've seen a jump yep. kick. Pretty impressive here. And, and we talked about it the first time too. This is a little dangerous, isn't it? I'm not it, sure if I agree is, with this. With especially with the injuries tonight and especially with yeah. the weather being as cold as it is. You've seen O'Rourke go down with possibly being cleated already, and that's a perfect scenario for the same thing to happen. I, I just, you know, I, I don't understand it. It's a very fair way to do it, don't get me wrong, but this isn't street ball. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, the whistle sounds on regulation time. So we're going to have some free soccer here at Marciano Stadium tonight. Both teams uh, going to rally around their goaltenders and headed to overtime for the first time this season. The Brockton Boxers and the Braintree Womps tied up at two. Sudden death, ladies and gentlemen. Next goal wins, and we'll have overtime for you right after this. Five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome to free soccer. That's right, overtime in the playoffs. Braintree and Brockton all tied up at two. Megan Anderson with the very big equalizer for the Brockton Boxers. And we're going to have a whistle against Brockton. Pretty sure that was handball. a handball. Yep, on uh, Adriana McDevitt. Um, actually, no, it would have been it would have been on Brockton. Not sure. Megan uh, Anderson. So Braintree with the free kick. A 10-minute overtime period being played as Jen Crusoe gets it up to the aforementioned Anderson. Del Pico playing forward. Brockton with only two women back. Turning on the offensive pressure. And big note for the Womps, Allison O'Rourke is uh, definitely going to sit the remainder of this one out. She has not been put back into the lineup uh, in overtime. Really uh, a, a devastating blow to this Braintree team. And, you know, if you're Coach Matthew Freeman, you just hope that one of your girls can step up in her place because she was doing everything for this team in the first half. And, and Angelina Joyce, we have a weird situation. It's going to be a whistle against Brockton. It's going to be a free kick for the Womps at their own 30-yard line. Not really sure what the call is. Eight minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the overtime period. Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside Eamon Convey bringing you all the action. And there's been plenty of it from Marciano Stadium here tonight. Really just an incredible game here. Two teams battling with everything they got. 2-2 in overtime. What else can you ask for if you're either of these coaches? These, their girls have played their hearts out, and they are leaving everything out here on the field in this playoff game. Liz Buckley with a little bit of a miss kick, sending it short, looking for Narita Montrond. Montrond with it now. Gets around two Braintree forwards. Now Montrond pushed from behind, no whistle. Ariana Sylvia with a good step to pick that ball up, looking for Megan Anderson, intercepted by number 12 for the Womps. That is Brooke Ewan. Narita Montrond with a couple of ankle-breaking moves in this game, and Ribeiro has been the victim of it both times, really, unfortunately so for her. She's ended up on the turf twice at the hands of, really, actually, let me say, at the feet of Narita Montrond. 2-2 two to two the score. It doesn't get any bigger than this, ladies and gentlemen. Overtime in the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs as Liz Buckley clears it. Now a shot picked up by Tori Viola. And she's going to kick it long. The first shot of overtime going to the Braintree Womps. Now Sylvia looking for Montron. Montron gets around the defender. She's going to be whistled for a hold. And she is frustrated with that whistle. It's the second time now you've seen a hook call or the hook symbol being given by the referee down here on the near side. Caruso frustrated with it. Montron now frustrated with the same call. Now Liz Buckley able to clear it. Braintree threatening. The shot into the arms of Tori Viola, another save for the freshman goalkeeper of the Brockton Boxers. She watched that one all the way in. She was uh, she was observing the play as it was going down. Emily Leonard able to turn and get a good shot on it, but uh, Viola was all over that. Brockton's defensive strategy definitely showing here in the overtime period, only going with two 
defenseman on the back line, now shifting for four. Oof, tough play there. Emily Leonard making a run out the far side of the field, and Ribeiro just plain missed her. And the ball ended up going to Melissa Madigan in the middle of the field. Really crucial mistake there for the Womps as Leonard, who is on fire NBA jam style in this game, would have had a wide open run at Torrey Viola. Just under six minutes left. We're going to have a whistle against the Brockton Boxers. Definitely getting chippy here in the overtime period for the Brockton Boxers, committing a lot of penalties thus far. And that's Emily Leonard for the Womps, who took the, the brute force over there on the far sidelines, able to get up a little gingerly, albeit, but she's, uh, she appears to be all right. Now a whistle against the Braintree Womps. The referee is not being shy with the whistles thus far in overtime. And Ariana Almeida will kick it long for the Brockton Boxers. Talk about the adjustments the teams have made. The referees have clearly made an adjustment too. The last quarter of, this, of regulation and in this overtime period, a lot more whistles than we heard in the first half and the first half of the second period as well. And, you know, really just got to be frustrating for both teams to have so many stoppages in play when you said it, Matt. Seconds are at a premium in this overtime period. But you know what it is, Eamon? The referees had their hands in the pockets the first three quarters of this game. Finally able to warm their hands up. They've taken them out of their pockets to blow some whistles. There you said. Now that, now that the hands are all warmed up, they can go ahead and uh, start using them again. Yeah, I don't blame them for keeping the hands in the pockets. I just wish they would go back to warming them up instead of using them. Four and a half minutes to go in the first overtime period. If it should get that far, we will have another overtime period of 10 minutes in length. And then it will go to penalty kicks. Really just, uh, you know, an exciting atmosphere here. Playoff game going into overtime. You know, if you're a fan of Brockton High soccer, obviously you're nervous in this period. But, you know, this is a great opportunity for these girls and really just an exciting time here at Marciano Stadium, Mad Dog. Absolutely. As that ball goes out of bounds off of... Brockton, Braintree threatening. Brockton not really having any offensive pressure in this overtime period. Narita Montron oversteps the ball a little bit and now number 24 back in the game. That is Joyce taken back by Yasmini Texera and kicked long by Ariana Almeida up for Montron. Montron looking long for Caruso, intercepted, but Montron gets it right back and sends it right back long again for Megan Anderson. Brockton threatening. And it's going to be picked up by Christy Fleming. Credit the defense there of Brittany Coyne doing a really good job of shielding Anderson off that ball once she got a touch on it. Now Narita Montron on the near sideline. Stops, pops, stops, pops again. And to the foot of Ariana Silvia. You can see the strategy. They're trying to go right up the seam to Caruso. Unable to get it there thus far. Keep an eye on that for the rest of this period. Now Joyce taking a run up the near sideline. It's going to be kicked out of bounds by Elizabeth Buckley. Good step by Buckley to get that ball out of bounds and out of danger with just under three minutes remaining here in the overtime. Absolutely. Showing a lot of poise in this period as Angelina Joyce took a uh, took a hard hit. And, uh, and she's back in there. Actually never came out of the game. It's a tough cookie. But... It's going to be a corner kick for Braintree with two and a half minutes to go. Number 11 for the Womps, Lily Horrigan, causing that ball to go out of bounds off of the Brockton boxes. And this is the game right here, Eamon. If, if Braintree is able to create something off of this corner kick, as we've seen both teams do tonight, this, this game could be over. The kick, the shot. Deflected, another shot. It's kicked out of out by Brockton and excellent support for Tori Viola by the players in the box for the Brockton boxers negating that corner kick opportunity. And we've got under two minutes to go here in the overtime. You said it, Mad Dog. Beautiful, beautiful defense there by Tiana Brooks, able to play the near post and step up and make a save on what was a very hard shot. Uh, from, from quite a distance and probably would have found the back of the net had Brooks not stepped up. Braintree coming right back with the offensive pressure. Number five makes, uh, number six rather than makes a nice move, but an excellent step by Almeida and it's kicked out of bounds by Tiana Brooks.
Good play there by Sylvia in the middle of the field. Just safely had it, keep it towards the sidelines. Nothing in the middle of the field at this point. Brockton not able to control the midfield at all here in the overtime as Maria Del Pico takes it for the Brockton Boxers, looking to start something going. Brockton hasn't had the majority of opportunities, Eamon, but as we very well know in overtime, anything goes as Jen Caruso with it. She has some room in the middle of the field. Her shot, Jen Caruso with the goal! What an unbelievable play by Jen Caruso. Who else would it be, Mad Dog? She's the girl wonder. She does everything for this team. Unbelievable. She's the one who who does it, who puts the ball in the back of the net, lacks the daisical defense there for the Wamps. Tough, tough way for the ball to go in the back of the net. And Tori Viola celebrating with her team. Unbelievable effort by this Brockton High Lady Boxers team, Mad Dog. Jen Caruso carving up the Wamps defense. And that's going to be the game as sudden death overtime, Jen Caruso Held in check during the regular portion of this game, turning it on in overtime and scoring the game winner, just absolutely carving up the defense, Amy. Incredible. Her 26th goal of the game, her 38th point on the season, over 100 for a career. Literally, what else do you want this girl to do? She gives you an overtime playoff game winning goal. Is there anything she can't do, Mad Dog? Absolutely not. We'll see her back in action on Wednesday night. The three goal scorers for the Brockton Boxers, Megan Anderson, uh, Ariana Sylvia, and Jen Caruso in overtime, along with the two goals for Braintree by number 20, Aaron Leonard. Brockton comes out on top. A big overtime win, an excellent way to start off the playoffs. Braintree knocked out. Brockton will take on Franklin at Franklin on Wednesday night. We'll have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. Eamon, your final thoughts. Just an incredible effort here. A wonderful way for these girls to continue their season. Five seniors on this team. One of them scores the game-winning goal. Ari Sylvia in there early. Narita Montron was the difference in this game without a question. Her ability to keep the corners in front of the net and create chances early in the game, using her footwork, using her speed, getting the ball to Caruso. Just a tremendous effort by Montron and the rest of the boxers, and they come away victorious as a result. Eamon, we got to hand it to Narita Montron, but the player of the game, hands down, has to be Tori Viola. She set the tone with the intimidation factor on the penalty kick that Braintree missed early in the first half, and from then on, it mostly all Brockton Overtime, Braintree had the majority of the chances, and as we're saying that anything goes in overtime, Jen Caruso carved up the defense and put it in the back of the net. The freshman, Tori Viola, starts it, and the senior, Jen Caruso, finishes it. You just can't write this stuff, man. Unbelievable evening here at Marciano Stadium, and a tremendous win for the Brockton Boxers. You said it, they're moving on, and they got a really tough test waiting for them on Wednesday. They, the Brockton Boxers, they're, they're on a roll right now, but I'm telling you, they better be ready to play on Wednesday because Franklin is not messing around. Well, the final score from Marciano Stadium, 3-2. to two, The Brockton Boxers come up with the big overtime win over the Braintree Wumps. For my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We will see you Wednesday night for round two. The Brockton Boxers will take on Franklin at Franklin in round two of the MIAA South Sectional Playoff, and we'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access Sports. Good night, everybody.